From the Samsung Production Studios in the heart of Hazleton, Pennsylvania, it's your News 13, brought to you by SSP TV and the Standard Speaker. A toppled tree takes out a family's home in the McAdoo area. They've got a six-month-old baby, no insurance, and are still waiting for help from officials and the Red Cross. News 13 tells you their story of desperation. Good evening and thank you so much for joining us, everyone. I'm Kristen Bozinski. A Klein Township family doesn't know where to turn tonight. A tree toppled during Superstorm Sandy, crashed into their home, leaving the family, including an infant, without a place to live. As Christina Papa tells us, local officials say they really can't help and the family doesn't know how it will get back on its feet. I have to knock it down and start over. Yeah, doesn't look like a house. Destructive winds ripped this tree on the Barry family's property right out by the roots during the height of Superstorm Sandy. The monstrous pine fell directly on top of their home on Haddock Road, leaving the family and their six-month-old girl homeless. It sounded like a big thing of lightning in the house, but then we went out and it was a big tree. It went right through our kitchen. It just destroyed the whole house. We just got done fixing it, and that's what happened when Hurricane Sandy. It just destroyed everything. 62-year-old Russell Berry lived here with his wife and children before Monday night. Now the house is so unsafe that local firefighters warned the family to not go inside. Our cameras did take a peek inside to see some of the damage. Russell says the 100-year-old house, once owned by his grandmother, is unfixable. I think, you lost. I think it's beyond repair, you know, it's it just tore the whole building up and I think it's even off the foundation. Making things worse, Barry recently lost his homeowner's insurance. Now the family has no way of repairing their home. This isn't the first time the bar's home was hit by a tree. Last time when this tree behind me hit the home, the family did have insurance to cover the damages. Barry did contact Schuylkill County for help, but they say homeowners must rely on insurance coverage in case of storm damage, and there's really nothing they can do to help. The family did contact the Red Cross, which said it would get back to them about finding a new place to live. For the moment, they're staying with friends. Christina Papa, News 13, McAdoo. Flames destroyed a home in Black Creek Township Tuesday night, forcing a family of four to stay with family members while continuing to search for their missing pet. This is all that's left of the Landis' home, which sits right along the right near the Sugarloaf Golf Course. The two-story single home in its garage completely destroyed when it burst into flames around 10 Tuesday, along with everything inside, including two cars, a motorcycle, and a boat. Thankfully, no one was hurt, but the family's now searching for their missing black miniature poodle named Lacey. News 13 spoke with a family member who says the Landises are still in a state of shock. The exact cause of this blaze still under investigation, but Nuremberg Weston Fire Chief Joe Laskovich says it appears to be an accident. Several fire crews remained on scene well into the early morning hours to make sure this fire was completely out here in Black Creek Township. PPL still working as fast as possible to get folks without power back online as quick as possible. As you can see from its outage map, the utility still trying to restore power to nearly 300,000 customers over a 29 county area. The utility says the return to service will be prioritized by first eliminating threats to public safety, then by getting power back to hospitals and other, other health and safety facilities, then to individual customers based on the greatest number that can be restored at one time. It's lights on again for the Heights section of Hazleton. After being in the dark since Monday night, residents are happy the juice is back on, especially because the temperatures are dropping. Bill Trabchak was cleaning up the mess Sandy left behind when News 13 stopped by this morning. He tells us the power went back on around 7 last night. What happened, the first thing I did, I ran all around the house and put the thermostats on high. And actually, we were freezing all day, especially my wife. She even had gloves on sitting in the chair. That's how cold it got. 
Jarabchak says his home is nice and warm now, and his wife even took off her gloves. When in the dark, Jarabchak used flashlights and candles and took advantage of his grill. Today, he plans on getting back to normal here in the Heights. The lights still haven't come back on for some folks in our viewing area, and the Hazleton YMYWCA wants to help and has offered a refreshing spot for those in the dark. If you need a shower or simply need to give your cell phone a little juice, the Y's doors are open for you. The Y is on Church Street in downtown Hazleton, and someone will be there to assist hurricane victims up until 10 o'clock tonight and then from 545 in the morning till 10 for the rest of the work week. Saturday's hours are 8 to 5. The Hazleton Area School District will be back up to speed tomorrow. That's right, the district announced this afternoon that students and teachers should report to school tomorrow morning at the regular time. No classes again today for students in the Hazleton Area School District. The ninth grade center suffered heavy water damage when rains from Superstorm Sandy came through the roof. Three other schools still didn't have power as of late yesterday. As cleanup at the ninth grade center continues, administrators are working on a plan to get everyone back in the classroom. While it may not be students' regular classroom, officials say students and teachers will soon be back to business of learning. Anyone whose classroom was affected, we will make sure their education is not affected whatsoever. They'll have their academics, they'll have their same teachers. Simply, they'll just be in another classroom. Um, whether that classroom's at the ninth grade building, whether that classroom's in the high school location for that particular period, they'll have their same classes with their same teacher. Now, 12 classrooms located in the same hallway of the ninth grade building were damaged from the storm. Again, all students and teachers in the Hazleton Area School District are to report for school at the usual times tomorrow. There may be some classroom shuffling once you get there, but classes will resume as usual. The lights came back on just in time for a re-grand opening celebration at a local business. The new owner was happy the hurricane didn't put a damper on the day. After being closed for about a year, the beer store has new life. The doors were once again opened at the Vine Street business in Hazleton. Now, before closing last year, the beer store was a staple of the community, having been open for over 30 years. And everyone's happy to be back in business and excited for some new additions. We're offering a free delivery, free home delivery. Uh, we're offering uh, a number of different brand beers at special prices. Uh, we're off also offering uh, an in-house tobacco store. Uh, we're offering uh, propane refills, CO2 refills. Today's grand opening celebration was complete with lots of treats, no tricks of course, from beer samples to hot dogs, prizes and surprises. The beer store open most days 9 to 9 and on Sundays from noon to 5. And still to come, today may be Halloween, but what is the true meaning behind this holiday. More on All Hallows Eve coming up. Plus, State Representative Tara Tuhill and her challenger Ransom Young will debate live here at News 13 SSP TV Studios tonight. We'll have more on that coming up next. Happy Halloween, everyone. Thankfully, Hurricane Sandy has passed and children all over the area will be able to get dressed up and enjoy an evening of tricks and treats. Our Jasmine Brooks joins us now with an important message on this holiday, one you might not know. Jasmine? Thank you, Kristen. Well, we've all been dressing up for Halloween since we were kids, and we all think we know what Halloween's all about. But let's think again. There's actually a psychic and Reiki master in Berwick who's been communicating with the spirit world since she was a young girl. She says All Halloween's Eve is actually a day extremely important to those who have passed. For many, today may be known as Halloween. But the true meaning behind this day is much more than costumes and candy. Actually, Halloween is a time to honor our loved ones who are passed over. It's a time to basically honor the dead. As a psychic and Reiki master, Charlotte connects with the spirit world on a daily basis and has talked with spirits since she was just seven years old. She says All Hallows' Eve is a very special time for the spirit world. What it's for is to have a silent supper in their name. You light some candles, it's really nice, set out some plates for them. 
They like to put out a lot of pictures of the people that's passed over that they love around the candles and the beautiful dinner. And then they do a beautiful prayer for them people. Charlotte says All Hallows Eve traditions were popular in the 17 and 1800s. Since that time, the true meaning has faded and become more commercialized, even adding a scary side, which is far from how the holiday started. And don't get me wrong, I have no problem with kids dressing up. I think it's awesome and they have fun and, you know, that's all cool to go get the candy. That's, that's, that's adorable. But also, too, we, we, we do have to remember um, it isn't supposed to be a scary holiday. It's supposed to be a positive holiday that honor our loved ones. The reality is Halloween has changed dramatically over the years, even bringing some negative, bad energy to the holiday. Charlotte suggests you watch out for that and concentrate on the positive. I think to have a safe holiday, I think to make it a fun celebration of our loved ones that's passed over. Kristen, I promised Charlotte I would mention to everyone that when you light those candles, make sure you do it safely to prevent any fires. That said, the true message here is to have fun on Halloween, but also remember the true meaning of this holiday by honoring your loved ones that have passed on, because the truth is, they are with us. All right, Jasmine, thanks so much. Interesting twist on Halloween from candy to the real meaning, according right. to Charlotte. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks so much. Sure. Well, is trick or treat on or off for tonight? In most communities, trick or treat is still a go, including the city of Hazleton. We'll share with you a list we compiled of the communities still giving out the candy tonight as planned. But first, some important information on staying safe while in search of goodies. Here's Hazleton City Police Chief Frank D'Andrea. Hi, I'm Chief Frank DeAndre of the Hazelton City Police Department. Halloween could be a magical and exciting time for children. Sometimes, we get so caught up in the magic of a moment, we fail to remember simple safety rules. Trick-or-treating shall be allowed within the City of Hazelton Wednesday, October 31st, 2012, from 5 p.m. until 8 p.m. In an attempt to keep Halloween safe and fun for everyone, here are some simple safety tips for everyone to remember. Adults, never allow young children to trick or treat alone. Instruct your children to trick or treat in groups and never go out alone. Stick to well illuminated areas and do not go into alleys or dark neighborhoods. Have a trusted adult accomp accompany your children. Instruct your older children to take friends when trick-or-treating. Teach your children to never enter the home of a person they do not know and never enter anyone's home without your permission. This year, to ensure we respect the privacy of everyone, the only houses that trick-or-treating is allowed at shall be those with a porch light on. Please make sure to respect others' privacy. Teach your children to never approach a vehicle alone. Have children wear reflective clothing and carry flashlights or glow sticks. Make sure masks do not block your child's clear view of where they walk and that their costumes are not too bulky to prevent safely walking. Ensure your children's costumes are marked as flame retardant. Remind older children that if something bad is occurring to shout loudly help or fire or anything to get another person's attention. If you're going to have pumpkins outside of your house, use glow sticks to illuminate them and not open flames. No matter how quaint this sounds, tell your children no eating candy until it is all inspected at the end of the night by an adult. When inspecting candy, never allow your children to eat any fruits or items that are homemade or not professionally wrapped unless they came from a family member or trusted friend. Instruct older children that it is never okay to harm an animal during the Halloween season. Following these simple safety tips will allow everyone to enjoy the holiday and remain safe. The Hazelton Police Department rem reminds everyone that if there is a problem, to immediately contact 911. By following these simple tips, Halloween should be a safe and enjoyable season for everyone.
Okay, here are some updated trick-or-treat information for all the little ghosts, goblins, princesses, and superheroes who are hoping to head out tonight in search of candy. Many communities will host trick-or-treating tonight. Some have had to postpone the event because of road closures and power outages. Now on your screen, just a quick list of areas where we were notified by officials. We have also added other communities on our Facebook page, SSPTV News 13. On your screen right now, you're winning midday lottery numbers. Good luck if you played your daily number, 675, Big 4, 9, 0, 6, 9, Quinto, 9, 5, 8, 1, 4, and Treasure Hunt, 1, 8, 13, 15, 21. Good luck. Good evening, everyone, and here's tonight's social news for tonight. Happy 83rd birthday to Tony Plitnick. This which comes from your family, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. Also tonight, happy birthday, Gene Babola. He's the bass player with the Sterling Tuck Band. Best wishes from dad, sister, and brother. One quick announcement in tonight's Talk of the Town, Boy Scout Troop 473 will be holding a rabies vaccination clinic Saturday, November 3rd from 9 a.m. to noon. The clinic will be held at the Northeast Animal Hospital in Freeland. Cost is just $10 per pet, and they must be on leashes and over three months old. For more information, please call 570-636-1877. That's Knight's Talk of the Town. News 13 would like to send sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Mary M. Gagol of West Hazleton. Mass will be held Friday at 10 a.m. in the Holy Name of Jesus Parish at Transfiguration Church. Friends may call Friday from 9 to 10 a.m. The Hillary J. Bonin Funeral Home is assisting the family. Helen Olga Fabian of Drums. Mass will be held Monday at 11 a.m. in the Nativity Church in Ohio. Friends may call Sunday from 5 to 9 p.m. at the Glovna Shimamarada Funeral Chapel. James P. Shaughnessy, formerly of Beaverbrook. Arrangements were by the Adams Green Funeral Home. Michael David Balliot of Drums. Funeral is Saturday at 11 a.m. from the St. John's Evangelical Lutheran Church. Friends may call Friday from 2 to 4 p.m. and from 6 to 9 p.m. at the Harmon Funeral Home. And John M. Agnello of Hazleton. Funeral is Sunday at 3 p.m. from the Philip J. Jeffries Funeral Home. Friends may call Sunday from 1 to 3 p.m. Tonight's obituaries have been brought to you by the Smilax Floral Shop located on 15th Street in Hazleton. Free delivery to all local funeral homes call 570-454-0111. And by Mia's. Don't settle for second best when dining out. Discover Mia's new low-price dinner menu. And remember, there's always plenty of free gated parking behind the Marco Building. SSP TV Sports on News 13 with Fred Barletta Jr. Well, it might be trick or treat, but uh, there's no sports out there for the Halloweeners tonight. The weather still playing havoc with it, and even though today is a much more normal day, everything got bumped back because uh, they just wanted to clear it out and make sure everything was okay. So tomorrow, we get back to normal in the world of local sports. And let's take a look and show you what we have. First, let's start with District 2. You're looking at right there the volleyball championships. This is single A, MMI, Dunmore. This one will be up in Dunmore, and it will be uh, the same time. It's actually a double header. Lackawanna, Susquehanna will play the first one, and as soon as that game's over, the MMI Lady Preppers will take the court. Double A girls, Redeemer and Tunkanic. That's at Redeemer. Western Wayne and North Pocono. And you got Crestwood and Lake Lehman. This one's going to be played at Nanny Coke. And Dallas and Nanny Coke will be at Nanny Coke as well. That'll be a couple of minutes after the Crestwood Lake Lehman deal. Now, AAA. There's where you find the Hazleton area Lady Cougars. Five o'clock tomorrow. They have a date with Abington Heights, and that'll be played at Delaware Valley. Why Delaware Valley? They're the number one seed, so they get to host it. They're playing Valley West, so we'll see what happens there. This is the uh, semifinals as we start winding our way down in district playoffs. Now, let's go down to District 11 at Marts Hall. You got Tri-Valley. They're gonna be going up against Shenandoah tomorrow. And you got the Marion Phillies and the Golden Girls. They'll be battling it out as well. That's all down at Marts Hall, semifinals in the District 11 playoffs. Back to District 2. Here's soccer. Hazel Tenaria, Wallen, Paul Pack, originally scheduled for six tomorrow. They bumped it up to 5.30, so take note of that. Lady Cougars, 5.30 at Wallen Pulpback. Meanwhile, Williamsport, Abington Heights, that one going to be played tomorrow as well. Triple A, this is boys, Delaware Valley, Wallen Pulpback, Wyoming Valley West, 
and Abington Heights. Let's go now from uh, soccer to field hockey. They'll finally get these championships in, and this is indeed the championship tomorrow at Spartan Stadium in Wilkes-Barre. It's Coughlin against uh, Honesdale. Honesdale knocked out Valley West, and uh, we'll see what happens in this Lackawanna Wyoming Valley Conference final. And speaking of the Wyoming Valley Conference, it'll be an all Wyoming Valley Conference deal in Double A, Crestwood, and Wyoming Seminary. Seminary knocked off Redeemer, as you remember, and Crestwood beat Wyoming area. It seems like it's been a while since they played field hockey, and it is. It's uh, a week and counting. So we'll see what happens as they get that one ready. But tomorrow, we finally get some of these in. One other note in local sports, the uh, freshman football game scheduled for tomorrow, Berwick at Hazleton. That is canceled. So that game is off the boards. Hey, you know, you uh, might want to start thinking about heating your home this winter. You could do it for less with American Premium Coal Sales. They offer locally mined quality anthracite at a very, very fair price. It's available for pickup or delivery. And you know, if you order six tons or more, you'll qualify for a $10 per ton discount. Now, want more information? You gotta contact American Premium Coal Sales. There's the number. It's even toll free if you're outside of the area. And they're there Monday through Friday, seven to four. There's their Saturday hours. Boy, can you beat good old fashioned anthracite coal to heat your home. Fred, thanks so much. Now, if you're heading out in search of goodies tonight, bundle up. It's going to be a chilly Halloween evening with temps dipping to the 30s. As we head to Schuylkill County first, we see the temp will be a low of 38 tonight. There is a chance of rain and skies remain cloudy. For your Thursday, everyone, mostly cloudy skies, 45 is what we will climb to on Thursday. Again, with that chance of precipitation sticking around. And take a look at this creative condition, a gigantic sun, courtesy of West Hazleton school student Josh Brasky. Take a good look at it because it's the only sun we will be seeing over the next few days at least. Tonight, for all you trick-or-treaters, bundle up. 34 will be our low in Greater Hazleton with cloudy skies. Chance of a shower, so take an umbrella just in case. And then for your Thursday, clouds remain. 45 will be our high. And again, the chance of rain sticking with us in Greater Hazleton as well for our Thursday. Just a reminder, the 116th district debate between State Representative Tara Tuhill and her Democratic challenger, Ransom Young, is a go for tonight. The two candidates will meet tonight, and you can watch that debate at 8 o'clock only on Channel 13 SSP-TV. You will also be able to watch the debate on demand at SSPTV.com. As Sandy continues to move north out of Pennsylvania, the damage remains and the cleanup rolls on. Continuing coverage of the Superstorm's aftermath ahead on News 13. Stick around. The staycation is over for students across the Hazleton Area School District. Sandy's wrath may have delayed the week, but students will head back to school tomorrow. From the Samsung Production Studios in the heart of Hazleton, Pennsylvania, it's your News 13. Thanks for staying with us tonight. I'm Kristen Bozinski. Students and teachers in the Hazleton Area School District will be back in the classroom tomorrow after an extra long weekend thanks to Superstorm Sandy and resulting water damage. The ninth grade center suffered heavy water damage when rains from Superstorm Sandy came through the roof. Three other schools still didn't have power as of late yesterday. And as cleanup at the ninth grade center continues, administrators are working on a plan to get everyone back in the classroom. While it may not be students' regular classroom, officials Officials say students and teachers will soon be back to the business of learning. Anyone whose classroom was affected, we will make sure their education is not affected whatsoever. They'll have their academics, they'll have their same teachers. Simply, they'll just be in another classroom. Um, whether that classroom is at the ninth grade building, whether that classroom is in the high school location for that particular period, they'll have their same classes with their same teacher. Now, 12 classrooms located in the same hallway of the ninth grade building were damaged from the storm. Again, all students and teachers in the Hazleton Area School District are to report for school at the usual times tomorrow. There may be some classroom shuffling once you get there, but classes will resume as usual.
Moving on tonight, flames destroyed a home in Black Creek Township Tuesday night, forcing a family of four to stay with family members while continuing to search for their missing pet. This is all that's left of the Landis's home, which sits right near the Sugarloaf Golf Course. The two story single home and its garage completely destroyed when it burst into flames around 10 Tuesday night, along with everything inside, including two cars, a motorcycle and a boat gone. Thankfully, no one was hurt, but the family is now searching for their missing black miniature poodle named Lacey. News 13 spoke with a family member who says the Landis's are still in a state of shock. The exact cause of the blaze is still under investigation, but Nuremberg Weston Fire Chief Joe Laskovich says it appears to be an accident. Several fire crews remain on scene well into the early morning hours to make sure this fire was completely out here in Black Creek Township. A Klein Township family doesn't know where to turn tonight. A tree toppled during Superstorm Sandy crashed into its home, leaving the family including an infant without a place to live. As Christina Papa tells us, local officials say they really can't help and the family doesn't know how it will get back on its feet. I have to knock it down and start over. Yeah, doesn't look like a house. Destructive winds ripped this tree on the Barry family's property right out by the roots during the height of Superstorm Sandy. The monstrous pine fell directly on top of their home on Haddock Road, leaving the family and their six-month-old girl homeless. It sounded like a big thing of lightning in the house, but then we went out and it was a big tree. It went right through our kitchen. It just destroyed the whole house. We just got done fixing it and that's what happened. Mm -hmm. Hurricane Sandy, it just destroyed everything. 62-year-old Russell Berry lived here with his wife and children before Monday night. Now the house is so unsafe that local firefighters warned the family to not go inside. Our cameras did take a peek inside to see some of the damage. Russell says the 100-year-old house, once owned by his grandmother, is unfixable. I think, you've lost. I think it's beyond repair, you know, it's... It just tore the whole building up, and I think it's even off the foundation. Making things worse, Barry recently lost his homeowner's insurance. Now the family has no way of repairing their home. This isn't the first time the Barry's home was hit by a tree. Last time when this tree behind me hit the home, the family did have insurance to cover the damages. Barry did contact Schuylkill County for help, but they say homeowners must rely on insurance coverage in case of storm damage, and there's really nothing they can do to help. The family did contact the Red Cross, which said it would get back to them about finding a new place to live. For the moment, they're staying with friends. Christina Papa, News 13, McAdoo. PPL still working as fast as possible to get folks without power back online as quick as possible. As you can see from its outage map, the utility is still trying to restore power to nearly 300,000 customers over a 29-county area. The utility says the return to service will be prioritized by first eliminating threats to public safety, then by getting power back to hospitals and other health and safety facilities, then to individual customers based on the greatest number that can be restored at one time. Time. Let there be light and heat and home cooked meals. The power is finally back on for people who live in the Heights section of Hazleton. After being in the dark since Monday night, residents are happy the juice is back on, especially because the temps are dropping. Bill Trapchak was cleaning up the mess Sandy left behind when News 13 stopped by this morning. He tells us the power went back on around 7 last night. What happened, the first thing I did, I ran all around the house and put the thermostats on high. And actually, we were freezing all day, especially my wife. She even had gloves on sitting in the chair. That's how cold it got. Drab Jack says his home is nice and warm now, and his wife even took off her gloves. When in the dark, Drab Jack used flashlights and candles and took advantage of his grill. Today, he plans on getting back to normal, just like many others, I'm sure, here in the Heights. If you are one of the unlucky ones still without power, you might be aching for a hot shower, or maybe you just want to give your cell phone a little juice. The Hazleton YMYWCA wants community members to know that the facility is ready to help hurricane victims by offering a refreshing spot, showers, phone charging spots, 
and more. The Y is on Church Street in downtown Hazleton, and someone will be there to assist hurricane victims up till 10 o'clock tonight, and then from 5.45 in the morning till 10 at night for the rest of the work week. And Saturday's hours are 8 to 5. And still to come tonight on News 13, we'll take one more look at that Halloween forecast. Plus, Hazleton's top cop, Frank D'Andrea, is in with some trick-or-treat safety tips in this week's Chief's Corner. And later, the original meaning behind Halloween. We'll explore the spirit world with a well-known psychic. Stay with us. And now some updated trick-or-treat information for all of you little ghosts, goblins, princesses, superheroes, whatever you're dressing up as and heading out tonight in search of candy. Many communities will host trick-or-treating tonight. Now some have had to postpone the event because of road closures and power outages. On your screen right now is just a quick list of areas that we were specifically notified by officials. And we've also added other communities on our Facebook page. So make sure you check it out there at SSPTV News 13. If candy is what you want tonight, then make sure you're warm enough to gather the goodies. The air will have quite a chill. Taking a look at your Halloween night forecast First. Cloudy skies in Schuylkill County, there is a slight chance of rain, so not only should you bundle up because it's only going to be 38, but grab an umbrella just in case. The next four days ahead in Schuylkill County go like this. Thursday, chance of showers, mostly cloudy skies, 45 will be our high. We dip to 37 on Thursday night. And then for your Friday, we're up to 47, mostly cloudy skies, slight chance of some showers. Friday night, cloudy, low down to 34. Saturday and Sunday are looking quite nice at this point in time, but very chilly. Look at the low on Saturday night, 30 degrees, folks. So turn up that heat come the weekend. And take a look at this creative condition, a gigantic sun, courtesy of West Hazleton student Josh Brasky. And as I told you earlier, make sure you take a really good look at that sun because it's the only one we're going to see till the weekend, as it stands right now. Chance of rain for tonight as many of you head out to trick or treat and low down to 34 degrees. The next four days in Greater Hazleton, look for a chance of showers, low down to, or high up to uh, 45 for your Thursday, Thursday night. Again, showers continue, possibly the mixture of some snow showers. Thursday evening will dip to 33. We're up to 44 on Friday. Friday night, mostly cloudy, low down to 32. And then Saturday and Sunday, make way for some sunshine. 42 will be our high Saturday, 30 for our low Saturday night, and then 47 for our high on Sunday. Sand Springs Country Club bringing you tonight's forecast with weekly restaurant specials and Wednesday means it's wing night at Sand Springs. Also offering extra thin cheese pizza this evening. All right, Sand Springs, make sure you head there. They're at 10 Clubhouse Drive, drums 788-5845. Visit them online at sandspringsgolf.com or you can also find them on Facebook. All right, keep it here on News 13. Freddie B is on deck with all your news from the world of sports. Plus, State Representative Tara Tuhill and her challenger Ransom Young will debate it out tonight on News 13 SSP TV right here at our studios in downtown Hazleton. We'll have more on that coming up next. We've all been dressing up for Halloween since we were kids and we all think we know what Halloween is about, but let's think again. There's a psychic and Reiki master in Berwick who's been communicating with the spirit world since she was young. Our Jasmine Brooks sat down with her as she explained, All Hallows Eve is actually a day extremely important to those who have passed. For many, today may be known as Halloween, but the true meaning behind this day is much more than costumes and candy. Actually, Halloween is a time to honor our loved ones who are passed over. It's a time to basically honor the dead. As a psychic and Reiki master, Charlotte connects with the spirit world on a daily basis and has talked with spirits since she was just seven years old. She says All Hallows Eve is a very special time for the spirit world. What it's for is to have a silent supper in their name. You light some candles, it's really nice, set out some plates for them, 
They like to put out a lot of pictures of the people that's passed over that they love around the candles and the beautiful dinner. And then they do a beautiful prayer for them people. Charlotte says All Hallows Eve traditions were popular in the 17 and 1800s. Since that time, the true meaning has faded and become more commercialized, even adding a scary side, which is far from how the holiday started. And don't get me wrong, I have no problem with kids dressing up. I think it's awesome and they have fun and, you know, that's all cool to go get the candy. That's, that's, that's adorable. But also, too, we, we, we do have to remember um, it isn't supposed to be a scary holiday. It's supposed to be a positive holiday that honor our loved ones. The reality is Halloween has changed dramatically over the years, even bringing some negative bad energy to the holiday. Charlotte suggests you watch out for that and concentrate on the positive. I think to have a safe holiday, I think to make it a fun celebration of our loved ones that's passed over. Jasmine Brooks, News 13, Columbia County. Jasmine, thank you. Well, just a reminder, the 116th district debate between State Representative Tara Tuhill and her Democratic challenger Ransom Young is a go for tonight. The two candidates will meet tonight and you can watch the debate at 8 o'clock only on Channel 13 SSP TV. You can also uh, watch the debate on demand SSPTV.com starting at 9 o'clock tonight, starting at 9 o'clock tonight on our website. And that will do it for us tonight. Thank you for making us a part of your day. You can catch this newscast again with a rebroadcast throughout this evening or simply go to News 13's website, ssptv.com. You're going to find everything Greater Hazleton, Schuylkill County, and beyond. It's all just a click away. On behalf of all of us here at News 13, be safe. We will see you back here on Thursday. Good night.